Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia. Today is Tuesday, the 3rd of September 2024. And I'm so glad you're joining me today to talk about some knitting and a little bit of crochet as well. Um, I'm recording this after about 30 minutes ago, getting completely drenched in the rain because it is September. So you guys, I had to get my first um, gingerbread latte and I'm very, very excited. It is very delicious. However, I thought I'd still record um, and talk about the couple of finished objects I have. So first up, I have finished my Nebula sweater. This is the Nebula by Drea Renee Nitz, who is Andrea Maori. Um, she's released this pattern quite recently and I really, really like it. You can make it either sort of short-sleeved or long-sleeved. So if you want to hear more about it being a progress, maybe go back an episode. And as you can tell, I have made it long sleeve. It's finished. I blocked it, but then obviously I got caught in the rain this uh, earlier today wearing it. So now it's still slightly wet and definitely not blocked anymore. But in a way, I don't know, it just made it really even more cozy. So I love it. So this is done. And I mentioned last week that I was a bit unsure about the length because it was very, very cropped. Um, and you guys, so I finished the sleeves, I did full length sleeves and I was like, I'll see how much yarn I have left. I really didn't want to be, um, going through the painstaking process of lengthening it, um, because it is a bottom up garment. So I couldn't just, you know, undo the rib and just make it a little bit longer, but I had about maybe 25 grams of yarn left. Um, and I did decide to make it longer. So what I did is once it was all done, I picked basically the lowest spot that I could find without including all the short rows because it has a, has a lot of short rows. And I picked up the stitches on a row B, um, above and beyond, uh, below, like you would for like an afterthought heel, cut one stitch and, you know, basically took the sweater into two pieces and then I lengthened it from the bottom up because that's the direction of the knitting. And then I Kitchener stitched it back together, which honestly, I mean, it took me one evening, but it was a long evening. It was a lot of work. And I measured, I, me I lengthened it about six centimeters. So just over two inches. And it is still cropped, but it is much better. I think otherwise it would have been just way, way, way too cropped because Andrea Maori, I think she has her garments quite short. She must have a short tor torso and I have a very long torso, so it just would have looked weird. But now, you know what? I love it. I love it so much. This is in hand spun yarn. Um, if you've been following this podcast, you've basically been, you will have been following the process of me spinning it and now knitting it. And it's just so soft. It's a woolen spun, 100% Coriadale. And I think actually getting caught in the rain, it just made it fluff up. A little bit more and it's just such a cozy sweater I really really like it which is good because I am spinning the same fiber in a different color this is um, John Arbin yarn Adelix fiber um, I'm spinning it a bit finer this time around but basically the same idea so I can make a similar sweater in a similar although probably finer yarn soon so that is my finished object number one and um, excuse the reach this is how much I had left so I basically knit in the round until I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure how much um, yarn the Kitchener stitch was going to take. And I definitely did not want to run out during the Kitchener stitch because that took ages. So this is how much I have left, which feels good because I've basically used up all of my yarn and it's out of stash, which is great. So that is finished object number one. And then I have a finished object number two. So you may remember this. This is the Retro Stripe Sunburst Granny Square Blanket, which is a long name. Um, it's a pattern by Naughty Crowl Designs. Um, I think there's a paid for version, but there's also a free version that just includes a bit more like ads and stuff. So I used the free version, but I copied the color choice of the designer. So this uh, uses Red Heart Super Saver, in the retro stripe colorway, um, which probably must have given it its name. 
and then the color Erin. And as you can tell, if you know the blanket, mine has a very different edging. The original is huge and it has a sort of pom-pom edge. And while I like this, the process, I don't know, something about this yarn just made my hands not feel great. So I sort of, it was a bit of a slog and then eventually I decided I would just finish it. Um, so I finished it off. I did a couple of uh, rounds of granny stitch around the whole blanket and then I did one round of I think single crochet or double crochet depending on if you're using UK or US turns in the contrasting color and I think it turned out really cute. It's not huge but it's also it's, it's, it's bigger than like your standard baby blanket and I asked my son when I finished it should we give it to a friend of ours who is expecting her second baby or should uh, did he want to keep it and he immediately decided he wants to have this for his room which is so cute he is so knit worthy and crochet worthy so yeah this will be his um and i will say i did throw this in the washing machine and i did even throw it in the dryer very very briefly because lots of you have told me that this yarn just soften up really so softens up really well and it did, it, it does feel nicer, and I think being used as a kid's blanket when it'll be washed and worn, I think this will actually be really good. So I'll probably get nicer, if anything, over time. And I'm showing you the back, not that it really matters. But yeah, so this is done, which is great, because I have so many blanket whips, and this is just one less to worry about. Um, I used a size 5mm crochet hook. And these tulip ones are my favorite so that's what I tend to use so this blanket can go, now go into my son's room and the other reason why I am recording today is um, because I finished these for my son and I know he'll want both of these finished objects for his room or to wear as, as soon as possible rather than waiting for me to podcast so if you have kids, I'm sure you know Paw Patrol and my son is obsessed with Paw Patrol. Like our entire house is Paw Patrol. And um, my favorite color, uh, my favorite character is Rubble. And I think because it's my favorite, it might be his favorite too now. So I have asked him if he would like some Rubble socks because I knew I had this yarn and stash and this is the pe perfect color, I think. It's a yellow puppy. Um, so I made him some socks. Um, he's been asking for more sort of knitwear lately, which is so cute. So how can I say no? So I made him these little socks and I finished them today. Um, what I did is I knit for a EU size 28 slash 29. Don't ask me about other kinds of sizing. Um, so I did 20, no, what did I do? 52 stitches. 26 stitches per needle on 2.25 millimeter needles and I just did my standard sort of uh, shadow wrap heel, a uh, round toe, just a plain vanilla sock and these look so big like when I think of socks for my son these just feel way too big but they actually fit it's just because I still think he's tiny but he's not um so yeah I finished this cute little pair of socks the yarn is Schreepje's Downtown in the Streetlights colorway, which is 405. I originally bought this to make socks for my husband. I think actually he would really like those colors as well. But this socks, a uh, sock yarn, it's like a commercial self-striping and it is so soft, which is great. But it also, because it's very soft, it doesn't wear particularly well. And my, my husband is really, really tough on his socks. So, yeah. While I have two bowls of this, I decided to just use it for my son and I'll see what I do with the leftovers. Um, but yeah, it was just too perfect and I don't think my son will wear these so much that they will wear out too quickly. And eventually he'll grow out of them anyways. So yeah, how cute are they? Um, yeah, so that is it for my finished objects um, for this week. I did a little bit of sock knitting on these, which I showed you last week. I just added a couple of stripes. Um, this is a three by one ribbed sock using mini skeins from Beehive Yarn. And I'm just doing eight row stripes. And I reckon after this stripe, I think this one should be ready for the toe. 
Um, in a sort of similar vein, I have worked on these socks. This is an old colorway by Fine Fish Yarns, who I still don't know if they're still dying or not. But I got this on a D-stash and it's a little bit crinkled because it was in a bag. Um, again, this should be almost ready for the toe. I need to measure. But yeah, I've, done, I've made some progress and more importantly, I have put in a afterthought heel. Um, so this one now has a heel, which it did last time I showed this to you. And yeah, I just knit on it a little bit. And I'm using 9 inch circulars for these ones. And you know, I usually don't like 9 inch ones, but these Adi ones that have one longer and one shorter needle, I think I like them. These I do enjoy. So yeah, I just wanted to briefly touch on that. And then, much more excitingly, when you finish a sweater, you have to cast on a new sweater, right? And I decided I really like this Nebula sweater. And I think this may be my next sort of lento, where I just knit a million of them. So things I've learned about this one is I probably would have liked this a little bit bigger and a little bit longer. And I just knew it wasn't an option with the hand spun because I only had this amount and that's fine. But I decided to cast on another Nebula sweater with a uh, commercial yarn. So let's... Hang on, I've got a mess here. But this is where we are. And isn't this color beautiful? I love it. I actually swatched with a, uh, you know, a bunch of different mohair and um, whole super soft combinations because I couldn't make my mind up. But I have been craving a red sweater for a while. In fact, I have a different sweater quantity in red that I want to turn into an anchor sweater and it just hasn't happened. But somehow this just felt right. So I have cast on another Nebula sweater by Dre Renee Knits. I am making the same size, but my gauge is one stitch bigger. So I'm having, I think, 16 stitches per 10 centimeters rather than 17. And with my mask, this should give me a roomier sweater, even though I am knitting the same size. Um, so as you can tell, you start from the bottom, you do the ribbing, and then you do a whole bunch of short rows, which is why it's much longer on this side than it is here. So I basically just sped through the entire section of short rows and everything in one evening. I was just so hooked on this. And now I have the most sort of um, relaxing part of the sweater ahead of me because I'm just going to knit round and round and round in stockinette until I get to the point where you split for the sleeves, which then becomes a bit more fiddly and more purling and all of that. But right now, this is a perfect sort of TV knitting project. And the yarn that I'm using is, I'm probably using my favorite color of whole super soft. I'm not sure, it's probably not going to come across as beautiful as it is. But this is whole super soft in the colorway, it's some kind of alcohol, brandy, I think. Um, and it's like an orangey red and it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful orangey red. It's very bright. So I am pairing it with this silk mohair, which I got on sale a long time ago. This is actually my first time using this kind of kid silk mohair. This is from um, Gepard. Gepard Sita, Seta. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. But yeah, so I got this on a sale. I think I have four or five balls, which should be enough. And luckily we found out that even with shorter sleeves, this looked really cute. So I'm not really worried though. I'm pretty sure I have um, more than enough yarn, both of the main color and the kid silk, which is great because this has been in stash for quite a while and I'm using up my yarn, which yeah, very, very exciting. And um, while this one is quite cropped, I think I prefer to wear this with, like I'm wearing it with a long skirt today. And by making this one a bit longer, I think I can just basically wear it with anything. So it'll be a really good versatile sweater. And yeah, could be an office sweater if I need it to be. So yeah, very, very excited about this. And my friends, that is basically what I've been working on. I need to pick up my Monticello wrap again because I have ignored it for a couple of weeks. I will also have to admit that if you remember the base camp shrug by Sosu Knits, I haven't shown that in a while and the reason is that it no longer exists. I have frogged it. 
which is such a shame. I honestly, I feel bad about doing it, but I love the colors. I loved the idea of it, but I just was never going to finish it. It was endless, endless rows of brioche, and I just didn't love it enough to do that. So very, very sadly, that yarn is now back in stash, but I could see myself making a stockinette, like striped sweater out of it someday. Or possibly even knitting that shrug in a different sort of phase of life. But yeah, it wasn't happening. So that is sadly no longer with us. Um, I have, however, if you remember last week, I showed you my first embroidery project. So I have actually finished it and it's already on the wall, so I can't show you, but I think you got the idea last week. And I could not help myself but um, start another one. So this is how these kits come. They are from Cotton Clara. I am not sponsored. I just like their kits. So I started the, an, another kit of theirs. I have one that is way more complicated and involves like different kinds of stitches and French knots. And I am getting ready for it, but I chickened out and went for another one that is very simple. And I am almost done. So this is the one that I've been working on um, since yesterday, actually. This just whipped up so quickly. It's just backstitch. It's really easy. It's very simple. Um, I think my back even doesn't look that horrible. I'm not that ashamed of it. Um, and the only reason why this isn't done is because one color thread is missing. And I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure they didn't, um, it wasn't included because all the thread um, came tied together really neatly. Um, yeah, so I mean it is possible that I lost it but I really don't think so because I have everything in my little pizza box. So I have reached out to them and I'm hoping they will send out the missing thread. If for whatever reason they don't, I probably have some thread somewhere for my first kit so I'm hoping because I did swap around the colors for my first one. I'm hoping one of the colors I have might work for this as well, because this is so close to being done, I sort of want to finish it. But yeah, can we call this a finished object? Not quite, but almost. So yeah, I have been working on that, and I'm really enjoying these little embroidery things. Like, listening to an audiobook while stitching, I find really relaxing. Whereas in the past, when I did cross-stitch, I just found it really annoying to you know count all the little crosses but when it's like this and the next one that i've picked um is again like much more involved should take a lot longer but again i think it should be mindless once i get the techniques i'm really enjoying this so yeah i am dabbling in new hobbies so yeah that is what i have been crafting and working on like I said, very happy to have a blanket of my whip pile and turn into an FO. Um, otherwise, yeah, life is just busy. Um, just sort of getting going through the emotions at the moment. My son is starting school next week. Um, I have a couple of days off work for that as well. So probably, hopefully, I should get both some crafting time and some podcasting time then. Um, and yeah, autumn has arrived. Thank God. I know it's not officially autumn, but it sort of is, right? Like September. I'm really enjoying it. I say that after literally getting caught out in the most horrendous rain without a coat or umbrella, but I love it. I do love it. So I'm quite happy with this. I feel like we're getting back into knitwear season. Um, yeah, I like it. What can I say? Um, my son is looking forward to Christmas, which is terrifying. Uh, I'm not that person. I'm not a super massive Christmas person. I'm also not a Halloween person. I just, I'm, I'm happy to like stick with September, October for the rest of the year. That would be fine by me, but it is not up to me. Anyways, I'm just waffling on, so I should get back to work, but thank you so much for um, joining in today. Oh, I should mention last week, what I thought I did was put like 10 seconds of music in the beginning and the end when I was showing off my sweaters, but instead we had endless music and it was really annoying. Or should I say, it divided people. Some people really liked it. I thought it was really annoying. 
So um, apologies for that. I did re-upload that episode. So if for whatever reason you didn't watch that, but you wanted to, it is now on YouTube without the annoying music. And I will stay very far away from music today because that was not fun to sort out. And I'm sure it wasn't fun to listen to. So apologies for that. And thank you so much for watching. I hope wherever you are in the world that you are healthy and safe and have some yarn to play with. As usual, do let me know what you're working on because basically every time someone tells me what they're working on, I'm like, yeah, I want to do that too. It just gives me so much inspiration. Um, so yeah, until I talk to you again, have a good week. Take care. Happy knitting. Bye.